eyes are considered the windows to the soul. But whether or not you believe animals have souls, the cataract op at the Johannesburg Animal Eye Hospital is expected to remove the curtains over Nettie's eyes. Diabetics caused Nettie's cataracts. So she's, you know, a little bit confused because uh, she has a brother and they've never been separated before in six years. So she's a little bit upset that he's not here. He's upset at home being alone. Uh, but yeah, it's a big day today. Yeah. 88% of the people with diabetes have cataracts. So that's what I'm talking about. So the people who have cataracts have cataracts. At this stage we're using a technique called fake emulsification, which is a very high frequency ultrasonic fragmentation of the lens. So we basically that enables us to remove the lens through a three millimeter little incision. So you go through a tiny little incision and remove the lens through that. So it's a minimal invasive procedure um, leading to a really successful outcome. We literally doing the most using the most modern technique and that's that's the gold standard used anywhere else in the world we're using exactly the same equipment as we do in humans for cataract surgery if you compare cataract surgery in a dog and in a human it is literally identical segment removal ultrasound sculpt ultrasound In the meantime, other pet owners and patients are waiting to see Africa's only female veterinary ophthalmologists. MRI and she failed the MRI. And they said it's liver cancer. And um, so we're going to put this uh, piece of filter paper. So the majority of our day focuses around um, dealing with, with dog and cat eye diseases. There is specifically one condition that we know as PANIS um, that we see very commonly in German Shepherd dogs. Um, and what we, what we notice here is um, due to the high levels of UV exposure, their corneas um, start to react um, in, in, a, in a very chronic and inflammatory you know, sort of nature. So it literally produces a film across the eye and that can affect vision. Now, quite interesting, um, at, um, at the coastal areas, uh, say for instance down in Cape Town, we have a practice there as well. We're not seeing as many PANIS cases amongst the German Shepherd population there. Um, and of course, so once again, the altitude um, and UV conditions, you know, sort of play a big role. Um, same goes for hemangiosarcoma, which is basically um, a, a tumour, a, a cancerous growth which, which forms on the eye, once again related to levels of UV exposure. We're also consulting in other countries um, like Hong Kong and Malaysia at one stage and also the UAE. And the reason for that is there's only a handful of veteran ophthalmologists worldwide, or there's a, there's a whole bunch in, in Europe and America. But if we look at Asia, there's literally two or three veteran ophthalmologists working there. So, um, and the big thing is animals get eye problems no matter where they live. Being the first vet in Africa to specialize in this field, Dr. Fenter did some of his training with the medical students of the University of Pretoria. He and his colleagues are now involved in training veterinary ophthalmologists. I think I'm very lucky and fortunate to be able to, to learn and underneath them and to be here with them too, so they can teach me and show me stuff here. Because they're the only one in the country, um, yeah, I think I'm very lucky. But cats and dogs are not the only patients. We do deal with a number of equine or horse patients as well. We've uh, been privileged enough to work with a few cheetah, lions, um, a rhino here and there. We've done cataract surgery on things from squirrels to porcupines to rhino, and from orangutans and lion and cheetah. So yeah, we've done a done whole vast, vast variety of, of animals. And I think the, probably the most challenging cataract surgeries are birds. Birds' eyes are anatomically completely different to, to normal mammals. In the meantime, Nettie woke up. Still a bit uncomfortable after the successful operation by Africa's pioneering veterinary ophthalmologist. But most of Nettie's vision has been restored. Marisa de Klerk, Joburg Today.